I can't stress enough that the most important thing that you need to know if you have periodic paralysis is what kind of periodic paralysis you have, because it's going to change all the other things about your life. Um, it's going to change uh, the triggers that will make you have an attack of periodic paralysis, regardless of the kind. Um, it could be uh, what kind of food you eat, what kind of temperature you're allowed to be in. It's going to make a difference in the medications that you can take. It, the list goes on and on, uh, depending on what kind of periodic paralysis you have. Probably one of the other most important things that I can tell people to do is that they need to learn to advocate for themselves. It's great if you have somebody there with you that can advocate for you because they know you so well. But really, unless you can't speak, you are your best advocate. And I know that there are types of periodic paralysis that people often can't speak for themselves. And at that point, yes, you do need to have somebody there with you. But you need to learn to stand up for yourself. <laughs> um, do doctors aren't gods in white coats. They're just people. And you're the person who's going to get yourself the best treatment. Know your triggers. One of the things that you might like to do is to actually keep a trigger log. And this entails having a notebook or a spreadsheet. Even you can do it on your computer, you can do it on your telephone. And just keep track of what you eat in a day, what your activity level is, and um, the hours that you sleep. Uh, any, anything that you do in a day, the medications that you take, uh, even the people that you interact with and maybe get stressed out with, all of these can help a doctor figure out what type of periodic paralysis you have. Another important fact that uh, you should always keep in mind is know that your symptoms can come and go. And that's what makes us so complicated for doctors. Uh, you know, one minute they might see us flat out on our back, uh, maybe not even being able to speak. And if we can convince somebody to give us the medication that we need, we might get up off that bed and be walking around the room uh, 30 minutes later. So it's pretty confusing for the medical profession. It's very important for all periodic paralysis patients to know that their symptoms can come and go. Uh, it was important for me in my life when I was younger that I, I always used to say, well, it's, it's gonna get better, you know, we'll, we'll tie another knot and hang on for a while. And it did get better. Um, and then it didn't. But it's important for you to know that uh, you aren't going to stay the way you are at any one minute. Um, it's going to be the treatments that you get, or um, sometimes it's just even laying down and going to sleep and letting your body re-regulate itself. A diet is super important to people with periodic paralysis because all the different types of periodic paralysis eat different things. What's good for one is not good for the other. So you need to know what parts of your diet are going to be triggers for you. Um, for me personally, because I am hypokalemic, I can't eat a lot of carbohydrates and I can't eat a lot of salt. Those are my two biggest triggers. If you would like to know more about periodic paralysis, visit periodicparalysis.org. And if you enjoyed this video and want more, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. It really does help spread the word. You can view other videos about periodic paralysis by clicking the thumbnails to the right. If you have questions, just leave a comment below or reach out to us on social media. We'd love to hear from you.